Hey, I'm Alec from Matter Hackers, and today I'm going to show you how to succeed with polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is one of the least commonly used 3D printing filaments, and there's a reason behind that. It's incredibly difficult to get a successful print, but if you do, polycarbonate has some incredible properties. It's high impact resistant, it's thermally resistant, which makes it a great application in RC cars, or drones, or phone cases. In fact, bulletproof glass is made from polycarbonate. So if you can get this stuff to print well, you have some pretty awesome options ahead of you. Because polycarbonate is such a difficult filament to print with, you wanna make sure that you at least understand the basics. So knock down PLA, understand how to troubleshoot that, and then from there you can move to ABS, when that starts splitting and warping and cracking, you'll know how to solve those problems by changing the heat, changing the fans, and those applications also apply to polycarbonate, just at a higher temperature. So make sure you at least know that before you attempt to go to polycarbonate because of how difficult it is. While polycarbonate is similar to PLA and ABS in its print practices, there are some very specific things that make polycarbonate successes or failures. So let's see what it actually takes. Tip number one, make sure your first layer is right. So if your Z offset's too far, it'll warp away really easily. If it's too close, the same thing will happen. It's a very fine balance to find where the first layer is, and it's very unique to polycarbonate where that is. So do some calibrating before you commit to big prints. Tip number two, print bed and adhesion. So polycarbonate really only likes to stick to more polycarbonate, so something like a polycarbonate cutting board will work well, or a Gerolite sheet for a print bed, that works too. If you're going to use a polycarbonate cutting board, make sure to use a little hairspray on top of it first, because what that will actually do is be a release agent. Otherwise the polycarbonate will stick to the cutting board, and now you have a cutting board size brim. The hairspray helps release the print afterwards, so it doesn't stick nearly as well to the cutting board. We've also had some success with using cyanoacrylic glue, otherwise known as super glue, and putting that in some borosilicate glass. Now, that's something you wanna be careful with because when the bed does heat up, it will make that glue off gas and those fumes are an irritant to both eyes and your lungs. I've gotten a little too close, been coughing, it's not great. In addition, your prints may stick so well you tear out chunks of glass and we've thrown out several sheets of glass. So be real careful when you're using super glue. Also make sure your heated bed can get up to 135 degrees Celsius. I know that sounds high, but that's even low for polycarbonate. If you can, 145, 155, that's a pretty good range. Only a couple printers can actually get that high and be able to maintain that temperature. But anything less, and these prints are gonna fall off the bed. Tip number three, calibrating your print temperature. So we generally print at 290 degrees Celsius for polycarbonate, but that's because most thermistors and thermocouples are only rated up to 300 degrees Celsius. And if you want to print any higher, you got to go to a specialized thermistor, change the firmware, a whole bunch of setup that's not stock with most printers. So if you have that, great, go higher than 290. If you don't, 290 is a pretty good stopping point. For the bed, we've been over 135, 145 if you can, 155 if you can. It's very temperamental. Tip number four, add an enclosure. Now we have a video on how to put together an enclosure using plastic sheeting and PVC. That works really well or you can build them out of Ikea lac tables. Basically, you're just trying to build something to keep the heat in the printer and keep the drafty air out, because drafts is how these split, and an enclosure is how these stay together. So it's very important to keep this as hot as possible. Tip number five, changing filament. Now, because polycarbonate prints at such a high temperature, you're gonna to wanna to make sure when you're going from polycarbonate to any other filament that it's actually all out of the nozzle. Otherwise, you're just gonna get a clog. So turn it up to about 260 when you're trying to extrude either PLA, ABS, nylon. And that'll make sure that all the polycarbonate's out, and at that point you're just going to extrude PLA or ABS. Tip number six, increase your chances of success by using a larger nozzle. So because there's such an issue with layer adhesion with polycarbonate, a larger nozzle can only help your chances of success. These are printed with a .4 nozzle, this is on a TAS, so these were .5. If you tried the Volcano and used a 0.8 nozzle, or you used the Moisture on a TAS with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle, you're having a lot of surface area between layers that are gonna ensure a successful print. But you do lose that surface finish. So you're not gonna get something like Rifle printed in polycarbonate, but you might at least get something small like this that doesn't have a lot of contours to print well with that larger nozzle. And that's it. Polycarbonate is a really difficult material to work with, but hopefully with this guide you have a starting point to tinker and have some patience to figure out what works best for you to get a successful print. 
We also have some links down below about polycarbonate and more information about printing it. I'm Alex from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos. And don't forget, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.